all the rain chances so we've got our shoes covered and so hopefully if it rains really heavily I'm gonna stop yeah we need to do something where we can so discuss this thing thoroughly test my setup but uh, it's nice this morning finally gotten used to our heat Yeah, it's nice. This is a nice, yeah. nice morning. It's not going to warm up much. 81, 82 is the high. So it's, it will rain. Because otherwise it will be 90 or 91. So I like the rain. We've got our training wheels on, training tires, ultra sport. And we're ready to roll. We'll get some clips for you. We're not looking for any group today. We're just gonna go out and spin. If we come across people, maybe, but we'll get some clips of us out on the road. On this ride, Paul and I left Northampton. We took a Creekside Green went out to Goslin, cut through the woodlands, Sterling Ridge, Branch Crossing, Research Forest. We got on Fish Creek, Honia Egypt Community Road, we filmed there. Went through the neighborhoods, Grand Lake Estates, Keenan cut off. We took that and went out to Spring Branch Road, we filmed there. By the time we got to the end of Spring Branch Road, we cut through Tri Lakes, and then we went on a little excursion on old 105 road there at Dead Ends. Just to check it out, we'd never been there. We came back and filmed on Jackson Road, past Cairn, into Magnolia. We ended the film at 149 with Jackson Road. This is on 1488. We took that back into the city. We didn't film on 1488, but we really poured it on out there. We kept the effort pretty high. We hope you enjoyed the clips that we got for you. Legends, the rain has arrived. We are on one of our favorite roads, Ponya Egypt Community Road. And look at this beautiful weather. <laughs> you can see the rain drops. I mean, they're heavy. This is the kind of weather for the hard men. <laughs> it rain. Hello legends, welcome back. Uh, those of you who were here for the video of the stage, I went ahead and started this session because there were a lot of interest, a lot of chats. I don't mind it so much because I really like the format of recording the video live, but it's just for the stage. So I didn't want it to drag on where we get into other discussions and so forth. So that the people who just come to get the stage, when they're not here at the live session, they can just get that video. So once it ended, I started this session so we can talk. Since it's hump day anyway, you know, I was able to get some K's in this morning. Our weather has been spotty rain, but it's very, very comfortable and mild. So we're like 28 Celsius, 80 degrees in the middle of the day, which is unusual for July. So we're enjoying it while we can. But I've since acclimated to being out in the hot weather, so I want to keep at it. So I even I, I go out for an hour here, here and there just to be outside. So it's kind of cool. But it's good to have you all back. I couldn't really get into discussions. Uh, Dwayne had put a comment there about, and then Patrick also talked about Pudge car being steady and so forth, which was very smart during the race. Hey, Melanin, welcome, welcome. But this is not just about the tour. I just have the backdrop because that's what I use for the other one. I can probably go ahead and turn that off anyway. But uh, this is for anything cycling, you know. So it's good to be here. Hey, Alpine. Oh, uh, Alpine, that's a great question. Have you? He says, have you sent? Have you had to send anything to Rafa for repair? Was the process easy? 
Yes, uh, the process was very easy. The way Rafa works is, they, you know, of course, they, they want you to clean the garment before you send it in. And a lot of times, they, they uh, in the past, I've used them at two different intervals. The first time I had to send the garment in and then they determine if they could repair it or not. Because depending on where the damage is, it's kind of like if your car has a nail in the sidewall, they don't like to plug it. If the nail's in the tread, then they plug it. Same thing with Rafa. They'll look at where the damage is and if it can't be repaired, you will get 50% off a replacement for that product. It doesn't matter how long you've owned the product, but they've since changed the process to where you take pictures of the damage and you send it to them. And then they determine if they need you to send the garment in. So if, if they determine they cannot repair the garment, you just get a, a, a voucher for a replacement. And the last time that happened to me, they gave me a 100% replacement because I had not owned the garment for a long time. Nobody else comes close. And I think that's neat that they do that because if you crash, they don't care why it got damaged. So you don't have to tell them, oh, I was just riding. I wasn't racing. They don't care. What are you racing, training, sitting outside? They don't care. Any damage is covered. And I've had them repair things and it came back and I could not tell that it had been repaired. So the quality of the repair, when they do choose to repair it, or if they're able to, they repair it to where no one can tell has been, they basically replace panels. I think that's what they do. So let's see here. Um, yeah, Dwayne, um, I, I came back. Dwayne, Dwayne said, glad to see you back. I was saying in the last chat that Rigoberta joined Allegiance with Capras and nearly got dropped. Um, that's Carapaz, yeah, and they focused on Pajacar and got attacked by the white jersey. Yeah, I know that, Dwayne, but the reason I came back was I, I was explaining earlier that when I do that, instead of recording the video and releasing it, which I have the option with this software, I have chosen to do the Tour de France analysis live. So it's great. I see your comments and everything, but I got a little feedback from some others that said, we would like for you to just finish the video before you get into the comments because they just want to get the recap of the stage. Now, everybody watches the whole stage and, you know, even us. Sometimes I'll just fast forward and get the highlights. I like to watch everything. I keep it on while I'm working so I'm able to hear it. I don't, I'm not sitting there for hours on end. So, so what, I, what I, I decided to do was just hold this session because there was a lot of interest and I saw your comment. And uh, so it may be something that we'll do from time to time as time permits. But we still have our Let's Talk Cycling regularly. It doesn't have to be about the tour. I was actually going to turn off that banner because uh, I don't want people to feel like we have to talk about the tour. Let's see here. There we go. So it's about anything cycling. We'll talk about anything. And we'll have these more now that I've got this software streamlined as time permits because I want people to have more access to live cycling information and help. In addition to the videos, I will continue to do the videos. So I just wanted you to understand that. So I wanted to end it so we don't end up with a two-hour highlight. <laughs> because you know how we are. We could talk cycling for hours, all of us. Let's see here. So uh, Alpine, you're welcome. I'm glad I answered that. But I, I think you will like the process. I like that. They only take things that they can repair to where you will not know it has been repaired. That's why they're picky. So if you get a tear in a certain part of the garment and they can't replace the entire panel, then they will tell you, you know what, we're just going to give you a voucher. Or you can, if they still have the product, they will just send you a replacement. They're really good about that. But if you've had it for years, like for me now, I wore the shorts until they were brown, <laughs> okay? The shorts had been black. The lycra faded to the point where the shorts were brown. So when I sent it in, you know, I couldn't argue if they offered me 50% of a brand new Rafa Pro team, you know? I had used it for years, and it got ripped. 
And then they decided, you know what? We're not going to replace it because if we replace it, the panel will be black and the rest of the short will be brown. So they just said, we'll give you 50% off the current pro team. I jumped at it because you know how they improve their stuff. So they've been very fair. I, I like their customer service. So I, I, I recommend them highly. You won't have any issues there. Let's see who else we got here. What is the hottest temperature outside that you will not cycle in, melanin? Um, there really isn't. I mean, it doesn't get, like we have like, sometimes we'll have 100 degrees. I don't mind the heat so much, melanin. I, I don't want to come across that I have a problem with the heat. It's just that for anybody, if you have not been in the heat, and it happened to the guys in the tour today. Because just because it's summer, not all of France is hot. So when they go to Mount Ventoux, that's, that's on the southeastern side of France. Let me, let me put the map back up behind me and slide away. So they're, they're over here. I, I, you probably cannot see my uh, cursor. But if you look to the right, let me move this microphone. They're in the southeastern, where, where it says uh, Maloche. That's where they went. They ended up in there. They're southeastern. They're in southeastern France. It's a lot hotter down there than up here on the left where you see they have Britannia. So imagine going from, say, 21 Celsius to 30 Celsius in a few days. You, you haven't had enough time to get used to that. That's why some of the guys were struggling, like Ben O'Connor, David Gordy. They were all struggling. So that's what I mean. So what happens is when we went from the end of May here, Melanin, it was like mm, 21 Celsius, 24 Celsius. Then it just went to 29, 30 Celsius with a lot of humidity because we had had a lot of rain. You have to give your body the chance to acclimate. I, I'm fine in the heat if I'm just outside doing the yard or whatever. But when I get on the bike to ride hard and I have not been out in it enough, I have to not only drink more, but I have to keep the effort down until I acclimate. It's like my engine overheats. So I usually need about three weeks. So if I were to go someplace very hot, let's say like Nevada or places in the desert, I would probably need to go a little earlier to acclimate. Same thing if I was dealing with altitude. You know, going a little earlier can help. But yeah, there is no, I mean, if it's reasonable, yeah. I mean, the temperatures we have here, we might have 100 degree days and so forth, but we rarely get there. It's mostly 93, but it's 94% humidity. So it feels like 106, but I'm not going to go out and ride at, when it's 106, if I can go out when it's 28 Celsius, which is like 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That, so you go out. That's why we go out early. So here what we do, we leave a little earlier this time of the year. So all, all of the rides that we normally visit, well, not all of them, one of them, the Team RR, they've reduced, they've changed the time to where they're leaving 30 minutes earlier. So they roll out at 7 instead of 7.30. So by 10.30, everybody's back. And that's what we, so Paul and myself, what we do now, we'll leave 6, 6.15, because about 5.30, the sun is coming out because of daylight savings time. By 6-ish, we're rolling out, and we try to get back no later than noon if we can avoid it. Because by 1 p.m., it starts to, the heat kicks up from 1 to 5. So uh, I can handle the temperature once I acclimate. If I haven't acclimated, then I have to ride at lower intensities. And I take my thermal bottles and everything I talked about, like my clean canteen. I take that with me because I want cold water. And then you've seen some of the riders in the tour that will put like a sock with ice on their spine. If you don't have that, just having cold water that you can pour on your spine, it, it, it's amazing what it does for your core temperature. Just pour a little bit of water on your spine. And then what I do is I wear the bandana. You've seen that before. And I let the flap fall over my neck. Other than that, 
yeah, I can do I can handle it. But no, if it's unbearable, I will not be out there. So I would say probably 105 actual temperature, not feel like temperature, but we never get there around here. The weather does not, the temperature does not go up that high like you have in the desert, like in Phoenix, where it's 110, 120. I wouldn't be riding in the, so I would probably cap it around maybe 100 degrees actual temperature. So what we do is we avoid going out when it's hot, very hot, so we go early or after 6 p.m. 536, you can roll out. It starts to taper off. So I hope that gives you an idea. But the body can tolerate anything. You just got to get used to it. Okay, let's see here. I hope that helps clear that up. <clears throat> oh, Dwayne said that makes sense. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, no, I don't mind, Dwayne. Don't change anything you're doing. Put your comments. I, I let the comments replay. I don't mind the comments uh, when I'm recording that. I let the comments replay so the people who are watching after the live session can see that. And if the comments are like leading into the next frame I'm going to talk about, I will definitely jump on it. So you don't need to change anything you're doing. I just wanted to end that session so it's short because it's a, it's a highlight per se. I didn't want it to be a one hour video, you know, so... 15, 20 minutes, it ends, that's good enough, and then we can shoot the breeze here. So the people who want to watch our video about us talking about all things cycling, that's what this is. Yeah, it just keeps it specific. I don't like for people to click on something expecting something else and not get what they call clickbait. I hate that, and I will never do that. There's no point. I want somebody to know what they're getting into when they click on it. You know, even if it, it doesn't end up being exactly what they get, but they'll know what the topic is about. So, no, you don't need to change anything you're doing. <laughs> and Robert's here. Robert says, uh, do you find it difficult to get parts and components? No, I don't, Robert. Uh, it depends on whether they're, what can I say, normal wear stuff or unique stuff. You know, the people who have the the very expensive componentry and so forth. It just takes a little more time to source. But I have contacts with a lot of wholesalers and stuff. I can get anything. I don't have any problems getting parts. The problem with parts, you have to know exactly what you need. So most things, yeah, you know you need a derailleur. All right, but there are situations where I run into where somebody has a 10-speed cassette and the chain is skipping in just one cog. And I'm like, you don't need to spend $300 on a cassette. I can just get that cog. That, because it's usually the cog they use the most, and they kept the last chain there too long, so it made shark tooth out of them. So now you put a new chain on it, and it's skipping in that one cog. And I tell them, well, let's just change that cog. So you have to know now, you have to take it apart and know exactly what cog works in that cluster. Because they're all different. If you got a 1225, the 17 for that may not fit the 17 for an 1132. So you got to know what to buy. And if you know what to buy, they're not that hard to get. That's the challenge. Knowing what to buy. Diagnosing. So I hope that helps explain that. And that's any bike. It doesn't have to be expensive. Any kind of bike, you got to know what to get. The hardest thing... Oh, working on a bike is diagnosing noise <laughs> because sometimes you think it's coming from the bottom bracket. It might be the headset. It might be the cups. You never really. So it's hard to diagnose. So you have to really eliminate step by step. But once you find out what it is, you just have to know what you're dealing with and then you'll, it'll be easy for you to get. So let's see here. I want to make sure I'm not missing all my members here. <clears throat> Michael Mandarino, welcome. Robert, check out Pro Bike Kid Merlin Glory Cycling websites. Yeah, those sites are okay, but he still has to know what he needs so he doesn't get the wrong part because Merlin, Merlin shipping can be pricey. Um, some of them will give you free shipping depending on how big the cart is. Um, but even Wiggle, I believe Wiggle bought chain reaction cycles. I think they're one now, but they have two separate sites. 
But yeah, you still need to know what you're getting because you don't want to have to return anything overseas because the, 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 the cost of shipping adds up. And so Melanin says, uh, thank you for answering. Here in Asia, it's very hot and humid, even at 5 a.m. All right, so we have days like that, Melanin. I don't know what your temperature is at 5 a.m., but we have days here in Central Texas where it's 81 degrees at midnight. <laughs> you know? And we're not, we're not going through that right now, but I just want you to know that there are mornings when we get up and it might be 78, 79 actual temperature. And then with the humidity, it'll feel like 86 or something. It still relates to what I said earlier. Most of us have air conditioning in Texas because it's unlike Seattle, Washington, parts of Portland and California, we don't get these Pacific breezes. So you need AC here because of the humidity. Well, being in the AC, working, playing, whatever in the AC, if you're not out there exerting yourself in the weather, then that's when you need to acclimate. The key is to drink more, but still, if you haven't been used to that temperature, that's not the day to go very hard. It's almost like your engine coolant level per se. You got to listen to how your body feels. Like the video I did when I was with the WCC guys, the speed and the effort or whatever, it wasn't very high. I just felt like I was in a sauna. It's like every my body felt like it was overheating. That's why I pulled out of that ride. I had maybe a week in the heat or something. But now I've gotten used to it. So, yeah, no problem. Once you get used to it, it's fine. Sometimes I'll even wear arm screens because, you know, we, we have days where they recommend that you not be outside where they'll say, you know, it's a high UV day and that kind of stuff. And sometimes I get blotches. You can see on my head right there. I'm very sensitive to extreme sunshine. And I... I tell people around here that it's hotter here than where I grew up in West Africa. So I, I and I believe it's because those of you who studied uh, geography or even social studies, this part of the world, the earth tilts towards the sun. That's why the days are longer. It gets dark like 830 right now. You know, some parts of the U.S., like I think Indiana, it will be like nine something at night. The sun's still up. It's really weird. So they're closer to the sun in the summer. Well, where I grew up, we're at the equator. Our days are the same, six to six. The sun rises at six, it sets at six all year. We're on Greenwich Mean Time in Liberia, which is what they use in Great Britain, I believe. So we, it doesn't change. So when I came over here and I, I realized, man, this place is hot. <laughs> You know, I went on a cruise one time, went to the Grand Cayman Islands. I got burned on the beach, on my head. I had to wear a hat all the time. Yeah, so it, it blew my mind. So I don't mess with the sun on this side of the world. <laughs> uh, imperceptible. Welcome, welcome. Rico from Phoenix, Arizona. So what's your temperature there, Rico? We're just talking about riding in very hot weather. Melanin asked, what temperature would I not go out and ride in? And I know for a fact, I used to travel through Phoenix and it would be seven o'clock in the morning. It'd be like a hundred and something degrees. I wouldn't go outside, you know, just connecting flights. So I know it gets hot over there. If it, I mean, early in the morning, six, seven in the morning, hundred and something degrees. I'm like, man. You know, and that's dry heat. It's hot. It's still hot. When you're in triple digits like that, it's hot. And you got to drink. You can't mess with that. You know, so it's uh, it's one of those things where you just have to acclimate. Same thing with the cold. You have to acclimate being out in the cold. Our weather here does the same thing in the fall. We stay like this until maybe October. And we maybe might get a, a, a front. And that first cold, I, that's why you see Paul and I, we're wearing tights. <laughs> you know? yeah. Until you get used to that, 
you, know, you can't play with it either, either end. You know, so now I just drink more and I showed, uh, I believe Jeffrey Davis asked about the bottles that I use. <laughs> He's got Rico says, early June, the highs were 117 and by 7 to 9 p.m. still 103. Yeah, I wouldn't be riding at 117. Maybe I'd be riding on the trainer or riding. <laughs> yeah, that's hot. That, that's hot because in the desert, that, 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 the air heats up quickly because it's dry. 117 my goodness man yeah um yeah you just you just have to listen to yourself melanin so for for you for example what i would recommend i know it's humid down there but try putting ice in your bottle i hope you got a thermal bottle because the regular bottles within 30 minutes everything will be tepid get some thermal bottles and then put some ice halfway put water in there and then whatever else you you're doing on your other you know, like the other bottle, you could do electrolytes or whatever. Keep ice in there. What I do with my thermal bottles, I put half ice, put some water, and whatever I'm drinking, it stays cold up to two hours. And that's usually when we stop at a store or somewhere. And then what I do is I go in the store and I fill up halfway with ice and put whatever drink I'm going to have in there and then reload my water. And if it gets really hot, I take a, a stocking. On my solo rides, I don't do it in the group rides. Like an old stocking, like, you know, you, you ladies have stockings or whatever. Cut, just make a short one and put ice in it. You can do that at the store. Just put it on your neck, under your jersey. Big difference. I may use it on one of the rides so you guys can see. You've probably seen the guys in the tour use it. They get it from the team car and all of that. But you can have that stocking and then when you get to the stop, you can reload the ice, put it on your neck. Just being out there, you will get used to it. The human body is amazing. You just got to get out there. You know, over here, we sit inside. You get in the car, the AC on, you know. When I drive my car by myself, unless I'm going to some meeting or something, if I'm just running to the store, I don't use the AC. I put the windows down. I get used to being out there. You know, that's what it takes. You know, right here, I'm sitting inside and it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit and it's AC. You know, that's where I keep it. You know, some places you go, they're colder. Like when you go to the grocery store, it's cold in there. (laughs) So you you don't get an opportunity to get used to it. But don't worry so much about it. Just drink, listen to your body. Don't go hard if you're not feeling great. And that's any time of the year. You don't feel good, back off. You're out to have fun, not hurt yourself. So Melanie said, I need a team car handing me drinks and ice stockings. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. You got to carry your own stuff when you solo. I mean, you know, it, it's not that hard to do. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not hard to do. You just, just, just pack. You just need your bottles, really. And then sometimes I'll carry three bottles. So I'll have a, a regular size bottle. I'll stick it in the middle pocket of my jersey. And I load a thermal bottle, I load that up with a lot more ice. So by the time I need it, the third hour, if I don't want to stop, the third hour, I still have it. And another thing I do is I carry the ice to where in those bottles, they don't always melt. If I get to the bottle and I drink a lot, I still have ice. So we stop at the parks. There are parks galore through the woodlands. So we'll stop at those parks and they've got the little doggy water spout that's down on the the regular uh, uh, water fountain. You just push the button, I mean, it gushes out. You fill up your bottle like that. We know where all those parks are because we stopped there. <laughs> that's Dwayne. Let's see what he says. Dwayne says, I watched the tour until 9.30 a.m. and went out for my ride at 10. That's awfully late for me. It was not too bad at 83. That's actually very nice. But I prefer cooler morning here. Yeah, you guys, uh, depending on where you are in California, if you buy the coast, I know San Diego, I used to visit there, the water, the Pacific Ocean, you get those cool friends, unless you go inland and it can warm up a lot. Yeah, but but most of the year in California, you have to carry like arm warmers and stuff because you can start cool and then it gets warmer when you get out there. So Austin from Utah. Welcome, Austin. I spent I spent a little bit of time in Utah on business many many years ago. Uh, what is the place called? Sandy something, Sandy River. I don't remember. I don't remember specifically, but it's beautiful out there. 
He said, a massive drought and super hot. Yeah. It seems like the whole western part of the country, um, I remember a couple of weeks ago, they were, the weekend was so hot, they were concerned that the people in Portland and in the Washington state would have challenges because m most of them don't have AC. And it was going to be like triple digits when normally they're 75 or so, you know. Yeah, Sandy. Yeah, that's where I was. It's nice, nice, quiet area. I was there for business, you know, and nice, quiet, small townish. <laughs> Robert said, "You use the parks for water fountain. I'm looking for bathrooms. Um, that's yeah, Robert. Some of them, like uh, Terramont, has bathrooms. Not all of them are like full service parks." So Rob, Robert Tangler is my neighbor here uh, west of me, lives in Tomball, Texas. And uh, he, he rides in the same area we're riding. Robert, you need to hit the park at uh, Terramont and Branch Crossing. There's a restroom there. Or the one at the Turn Circle at Creekside Forest and Creekside Green. There's one up there that has a restroom. So you got to have to look for the bigger parks. But, you know, they have all these little parks, and we, we mostly need water, so it's good to know where they are. But they've, they've got some, you have to get the full-size parks. They've got parks all over the place. You're right. Not all of them have bathrooms. But it's good to know where they are. And so what I do is I make sure when we stop at the stores, when we're out of town, I load up with a lot of ice. So by the time we get in town, even though I've finished drinking, I still have ice in the bottle because the water at the park is just room temperature. Well, you know, outdoor temperature per se. But sometimes if you hold it long enough, the water comes out pretty cold after a little bit. And But I like that. At least I like having access to water to just kind of pour on yourself when it's very hot. But once you get used to being out there, it's not that bad. And I don't you don't you're not going to see me riding at 2 p.m. You know, it's just, it's just too hot. So from one to five, you want to be inside. Even when I do yard work, it's either early in the morning or after five. And that's pretty much mostly around there. Except for the guys that do it for a living. They're out there. They got a lot of stuff to cover. But the middle of the day in this part of the country, it's almost like how you guys up north hibernate in the winter. The hottest part of the day, everybody's inside. Either in the office or in the house or whatever. You know, and then after five, people go out for walks and runs or early in the morning. People walk their dogs very early in the morning. You know, and that's everywhere. You got to get the dogs out. But, yeah, you don't want to be out there in the heat. You look crazy when you're out there, too, because people are like, man, doesn't he know it's hot? <laughs> Dwayne says he uses the Camelback insulated bottles that keep my liquids nice and cool. I bought a 50-ounce Camelback a few years ago. I wear it in 90 to 100 degree where I wear it once in a blue moon, but it keeps me cool. Yeah, that's cool. I uh, I just use bottles. I just, uh, I I stop every two hours. I mean, you know, you need, you need a, you need a rest, like a health break anyway. Most of our stops are, we're in the middle of nowhere or whatever. It takes about an hour for us from where I am to get out of town. So it takes us an hour. Like if you guys watch the group rides, it takes us about an hour to meet Team RR. Well, Team RR, where they meet, is on the outskirts of the woodlands, on the northwestern side, per se. So it takes us 45 minutes to get there, 35, 40 minutes to get there. And then 10, 15 minutes, you're out of town. But when I ride solo, it takes me 50 minutes to hit um, 1488, just riding normally. And then once you hit 1488 and you have to decide, do I go west, north, whatever, because that's out of town. And that's the thing, just to get out of town. So I, I set it up to where 20 minutes I'm warming up and then I start to ride. And then by the time I get out there, I'm into the ride and I try to think, okay, where do I need to stop? Because we have different places and everybody has preferred stores. There are certain stores I don't like to stop at because the clerks act like you're disturbing them. I like to stop at places that welcome my business. I'm sure you guys know what I mean. So there's certain stores we prefer, you know, we just feel like they're happy to see us and so forth. And we, we, we plan to stop there. But they're adding even more stores like on Keenan Cutoff Road now. They've got another Texaco that is finishing up. 
And I think you guys saw the Chevron, where we stopped at for the guys who use the porta potty. That's already open. It's near when we're going to Spring Branch Road. It's nice and quiet out there. So I try to go to where if I'm riding solo, I'm hitting a lot of climbs. So I don't have to think about working. I can just ride the climbs. And it really makes a difference. Before you know it, it starts feeling easier to carry larger gears. That's really what happens. The body just adapts, you know. <laughs> so you got to get out there. That's what happens when you take time off and you're like, man, everything feels hard. Well, you, it's like you lose fitness and the body kind of, you know, the human body forgets quickly because you know, especially cycling, pedaling is not a natural motion. So it's, yeah, it's one of those things. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, do this because I saw so many comments when I was doing the video. And this stage was just awesome. These guys, uh, the, what may have looked like people were, oh, this guy got dropped. Why is he not up there? Those guys were using their head. I thought that uh, all four of them coming in, the top four contenders coming in together just showed that they knew what they were doing. You know, when you have a downhill finish, you don't need to kill yourself. You can catch those guys. So if you're a bigger rider and the smaller rider is attacking the climb, just let him go. You'll catch him. So let's see here. Is that Dwayne said that is true, Eldred. There's a gentleman who owns Arco here in California that loves cyclists. He bakes fresh hot cookies for us every weekend during the winter months. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I, even if I'm not on a bike, if I'm in my car going to a store, I want to feel like you appreciate my business. If you don't, I'm not going to patronize you. I'm not, I'm not coming in there for something free. You know, it's the same attitude I have is you will, you will never see me standing in line to buy an iPhone or some foolishness like that. If I'm spending money, they need to wait on me. Now, if it were free, maybe. I see people camping out because they want to be the first to get the phone. Then they get all the bugs and they start complaining. <laughs> you know, uh, so I don't know. <laughs> Free cookies. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, we have a place in Richards, Texas. There's one store. You guys have seen it on the film. You know, you blink, you miss it. But one store, but when we go in there, the lady is very happy to see us. So one time we went in, we even bought beef jerky that they had, some guy had made locally and they had it in bags on the counter. You know, so it's like, she, she makes it, makes you feel welcome. You know, so it's like, yeah, you don't, if I'm not welcome, then I'm not going. I'm, I'm going to go spend money and then I'm supposed to be uncomfortable. No, 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 no. And that's why when I go to the store to buy groceries, I don't do the only way you're going to see me doing self checkout is if I got just one or two items. I want somebody waiting on me because <laughs> you know? our local Walmart here, we have one um, in actually Tomball where Robert lives. Tomballs extends, you know, like there's an area called Kirkendall and 2920. And part of that is Tomball. So it's in, you know, his town. We have a Walmart on the corner of Kirkendall and 2920. And every time you go there, they got one or two people checking out. And then they got all this the, the self-checkout open. But then you got this long line, especially with the COVID thing that they used to do, the six-foot thing, six feet apart. So you had the line snaking. I'd always go to the customer service and say, who's the manager? And it open point. I say, we need more checkouts open then she'll come and get other people and open up stuff because if you don't say anything she may not be aware that there's a line or doesn't care i'm like so I, so I told her yeah if you don't want me to abandon the cart just like you abandon the cart online people will leave the cart full of stuff and walk out the store i see it happen all the time you know i mean it's a waste of their time because they took the time to gather all that stuff but still you're letting money as a business, you're letting money walk out the door. Then why did you open up? You know, so I'll go find the manager. Get stuff open, man. We need people to check us out. We need to get out of here. <laughs> you know. And then unlike that store, there's an HEB at 2920 in Goslin. You go there, they have everything staffed. 
you never wait to get out of there. So it's completely different. So most of the time, I go to the HEB. My wife prefers the Walmart. You know, everybody has their preference. And even among Walmart, she prefers a particular Walmart because she says, I know where everything is. Because <laughs> you know? I guess from store to store, they move them around. I don't frequent those stores. I get stuff I need online. But yeah, um, when I do go, I like the HEB. I get in there, get my stuff, get out. I still wear a mask. Um, I don't really know, you know, but until these guys get this stuff nailed down, because they're still learning, I don't take chances, you know. So it's one of those things. But yeah, um, you just got to, you got to spend your money where you're welcome. You're spending money. They need to be nice to you. They need to wait on you. Uh, what's the movie? Pretty Woman. I saw that many, many years ago. Richard Gere, Julia, what's her name? Roberts. Richard Gere took, takes Julia Roberts because she had been shunned because she was a lady of the night. She went to some store in Beverly Hills or wherever to go shop, and they were looking down on her or whatever. So he heard about it when he got back. He took her there, and the manager came, and the manager knew him, you know, men of means. <laughs> and the manager, thanks, Dwayne. The manager said, the manager said, how can we help you, Mr. Blah, blah, blah? He said, no, 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 not me, her. He said, I want some serious kissing up. <laughs> he went back to the same store or something like that. So you, need, you don't need a kiss up to me, you need a kiss up to her. You know, I just I like that scene. Kind of laughed. It was funny. <laughs> yeah. So um, we we um, we we differ on how we think. My wife and I, which is why it's good because we complement each other. Because <laughs> it's like I don't like spending too many hours in the stores, and so my daughters like to go to the store with me because we have a list. We have a focus. We get in, get the stuff, get out. Got other things to do. <laughs> My wife likes to go to many different stores, try on this, try on all that kind of stuff. So, you know, different different style, different strokes for different folks, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dwayne's laughing. Yeah, I mean, you know, just I don't have time to be wasting in a store. I mean, please, get what you need and get out. We got other things to do. I do a lot of curbside stuff now because all the stores are offering that. Find it online and they bring it to your car. I think that's neat. And some of them do it really well. Some of them are still getting a little glitchy, but uh, there's a Best Buy in the Woodlands does it really well. Like two minutes, guy was out there with my stuff. <clears throat> so it's like, yeah. Yeah, Alex, I work with software. Oracle financials, manufacturing, stuff like that. Pretty boring stuff, business stuff. But those skills are what has enabled me to get this channel polished so quickly. <clears throat> because um, a lot of the stuff out there, I said earlier on another stream, if you just buy a pre-formatted um, package, you can't control your branding. You guys see when I started this stream, I was running the ride, the group rides. I can run anything on the channel in this software. I can run anything that I film or on my phone or anything in this software. So I can show you whatever I choose to show you. No limits. You know, that's why I mean when I said it was difficult to learn, but it gives you so much more flexibility. So I'm not limited to what I can bring in and all of that. So it's kind of it's kind of nice to be able to do that. I've done um, Oracle Financial, SAP, all that kind of stuff. My challenge with that is uh, I'm weaning myself away because too much travel. And so I've gotten into more of the bike fitting stuff and all of that. So that's that's kind of cool because I control my day better. Like this morning I rode for, let's see, hour and a half or so. I, I, I filmed some stuff. Let me see if I can do an airdrop. <laughs> Apple has something called airdrop and you can share stuff. 
between your devices. Let me see if I can drop the film and then run it and have you guys look at it. Let's see if I can share that here. Yeah, it's just neat what you can do nowadays with these things. So you can share video. I did I did some clips um, just to say, you know, you start your day. This is how you start your day. And let's see. Let's transfer it to. It says no people found. I got to open up. And I got to be, I got to open Wi-Fi, I think. It'll drop. Yep, yeah, turn on Wi-Fi. I don't use Wi-Fi much because the landline has more throughput. I only use Wi-Fi if I'm outside or something like that. So let's see if it will find it. There we go. Yep, this thing works. It's, it's sending the, the film I made on my phone this morning to my computer. You know, I, I show these kind of things to my wife, but she has no interest in how they work. She just wants them to work. And I explained to her, well, I'm not always going to be there to punch it for you because my style is I want to show you how to catch your own fish. <laughs> and sometimes she said, just do it for me. I'm like, well, I want to show you how to do it. <laughs> ah, let's see here. Somebody's got a question there while that thing is loading. Ever try, let's see. Ever try a generic carbon frame for Alibaba? No, I haven't bought anything from Alibaba. Now, I don't know what the problem is. One time I tried to look for something. I think they were blocked from shipping to the U.S. at that time. And it was many years ago. So unless it's changed. But it seemed to have a lot of copies of stuff. I don't like to buy copies. If I'm going to buy an Oakley frame, or an, I mean an Oakley pair of shades, I want Oakley. I don't want something that looks like Oakley. Like a lot of guys on YouTube uh, that have cycling channels, I think including Durian Rider, they call it Folkley or something like that. I guess that's a spin on that. What's the point? If it were any good, they'd brand it. So no, I don't buy anything from Alibaba. <laughs> $160 for a carbon frame? Uh, that's a little scary. <laughs> You know, I don't know where you're getting. <laughs> so be careful. Um, you know, hopefully it's solid. Yeah, Austin says I use fake puck glasses. Yeah, that's my point. Why call it puck when it's not? Give it your own brand. What's the point of? I mean, I know uh, it, it's a form of flattery, but I'd much rather have a pair of pucks or not at all. Why well, have something that's fake puck? I just want to have a pair of glasses, whatever they may be. Even if it's a brand no cyclist knows. As long as they work well, I don't care about the branding. I want the product to function. <laughs> He's I would call it fuck. <laughs> we'll see. I'm riding titanium now. It's nice. Yeah, they're all, you know, they're pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I don't do the copy stuff because, I mean, what's the point? I, I, had, I talked about a, a guy we used to ride with that had the zips that were made. I think, I don't know where he got them from. It could have been Alibaba. They were zip, they were called zip, but it was clear they were not zip. He knew they were not zip. He told the group he paid $400 for a pair of wheels. They had the dimples painted on there. <laughs> <laughs> and then they called it zip and it was noisy it felt like it was it was going to break all the time periodically every time he used it there was a high metallic pinging going on we didn't know what was causing it four hundred dollars for that now nah, you should have just saved the money and gotten something else he got it for aliexpress okay yeah they just they look funny you looked at them and other people in the group had the real zips. So, yeah, he wasn't acting like he had zips. He knew. He told us. But you looked at it, and you could see that somebody painted the dimples on there. And then they put the, the, the thing that looked like zip. I mean, it's just a clear copy. My issue with that is two things. Zip invested time to come up with the technology to actually put dimple uh, what you call the, the indentations in the carbon 
to benefit people. Okay, then they, they advertise their brand. They pay people to advertise it or sponsor teams, whatever. Then somebody somewhere decides, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to ride on your wave. I think there's something wrong with that. What they should do is create their own wheel. And even if you don't have the budget of zip, just put it out there and brand it. It's yours. You know? And so, and, and the other thing is that Dwayne says safety is more important than looks and name. So here's another thing. You don't know what kind of testing they did or whatever. They just copied it. They painted the dimples. And then that noise that it made, that was scary. Imagine riding your wheel and it sounds like your spokes are about to break periodically throughout the ride. No one liked following him. That noise annoyed everybody. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I just thought, yeah, I'd much rather have something that the manufacturer stands behind, good QC, safety, you know, they, they, you know nothing's guaranteed, but at least we got to make sure they, they did some kind of testing. You know, that, that's the thing. So why, why are they not branding it? Is it because what? I don't know. Why, why act like something else? So, I, I, yeah, that, that's what concerns me. So we, we get a lot of offers from stuff like that here. You know, the channel's successful. People want to send stuff. And I'm like, you know, yeah, you can send it. I say, I'll look at it. So a lot of stuff I don't even review. I, and I let them know. I'm not going to do a video that says, oh, these are crappy wheels. Well, what's the point of that? <laughs> you know, you're not mainstream anyway. You're not advertising the way you're going to entice the viewers on here to buy it. So nobody knows you. So why should I even? I'll just tell them you need to do this, this, and this. So I get a lot of stuff where I just give them feedback and say, if you improve that and send it, I'll do a video. And uh, what's their name? Uh, Suki Sports. I'm, I just got a package today from them. I haven't opened it yet. They're sending new shorts and new jersey for me to review because I told them that even though the other shorts they sent was very good, I prefer a little lighter pad. So they have a pair of shorts with lighter pads. And that's kind of nice, kind of humbling, you know, like, oh, they're listening to me. So I just got them in. She wants me to compare the two shorts in a video. And then she wants me to review the other jersey. I, I opened up the, the thing and I looked at the jersey. The jersey looks like a, a flyweight jersey. What's nice is it's well ventilated, but it's not one of those where you put on and people can see your nipples. You guys know the real lightweight. So it's nice. It, it, and I, I can't wait to, to, to try it out. You know, it just came in earlier today. So I, so I get a lot of stuff that I decline or don't even bother looking at. Because I want to focus on stuff that I would spend my own money on and not just bring stuff to the channel because somebody said they, got, they have a product. <laughs> you know? So be careful with the, with the copy stuff and just make sure they're safe. I'm sure they're okay because uh, you know, whatever dollars you save, you don't want to injure yourself using their products. I, I told a story about the guy whose pedal broke. I don't know where he got them from, so it doesn't mean that they were copies. It's the same guy with the wheels. So chances are, you know, kind of like the police say, right? You got a history. <laughs> We're going to have to talk to you a little longer. You're a person of interest. So the same guy with the wheels. We're on a ride. Pedal axle breaks while he's riding. He falls heavily. And he's a big guy. Hit the deck and it ended his ride. He had a call for a ride. He didn't break anything but just road rash. His pedal broke, and I looked at the pedal axle. It was gray. The metal was gray inside. It didn't look like steel. So I think he may have bought something that was copied. So just be careful. So let's, let's see here. Somebody, Michael. Yeah, Michael says, been thinking about my first bike build, and I'm going with an Italian brand. Okay, let's see. By Bertoletti. I've heard of them. Any advice on going with aluminum, steel, titanium, or carbon? Going to pair with Campy Super Record. I actually have a video. <laughs> I have a video you need to watch. It's one of our popular videos. 
Um, I need to, let me just, yeah, that, I think the video will, will answer your question because I covered everything from cost, preference, uh, you know, and I, I think I talked about aluminum steel. Yeah, yeah, let me find the video here. Let's see. Let's go to, let's see here. Let me go to the channel and find it for you. Yeah, you, you need a that video will answer your question. It will give you it will give you something you can refer to and it will be more thorough than any answer I can give you here. We we've had these questions before and that's why I actually did that video and it ended up being one of these videos where they call uh, like I guess archive videos. People people like that. I still get kudos on it even though it's been out for a while. Let's see here. Let's go to let me find the video. So if you go on the channel and you just search across the channel, I think I called it, um, I don't remember what I called it. Let's see. Frame. What did I call it? Frame. Mm. It's actually one of the popular things on here. Let me just look in the content and look at the analytics. I think it's always in the top 10 or something like that. It's always one of the top 10 videos. Let's see here. My buddy has a legend. This is Austin. My buddy has a legend 53 titanium frame for sale. Looks nice. 53. That's a little small for me. Let's see here. Um, okay, so if you search for steel versus aluminum versus carbon, it will pop up. That's the title of the video. I, I basically compared all of them. Just go on the channel and search for steel versus aluminum versus carbon versus titanium. I think even if you did it on general YouTube, it will probably show up. You'll find that video. That, that's, that will answer your question. It will give you something to refer to. In fact, I'll, I just put it in Google and it popped up. So that means in YouTube, you'll have no trouble finding it. Steel versus aluminum versus carbon versus titanium. It pops up. You do it on the on YouTube, it should pop up. So yeah, that's what you need. You're welcome, Michael. The um, the video was so popular. There's a guy named um, I can't. Every time I talk about him, I forget his name. He's an Australian guy. He has a cycling channel, Cam Nichols, I think. Cam borrowed <laughs> clips from it once. He asked for my permission. And he used it when, when he was starting his channel. Cam Nichols, I think that's his name. Yeah. Yeah, he used, yeah, Cam Nichols, he used it on there. So, yeah, it's a very thorough video. That's why I started doing more live sessions so we can, you know, because we've got so many videos out there. And then as I get topics that people ask for i will do videos for them of course i will continue to do the reviews <laughs> melanin said alibaba has a lot of copies and cheap materials yeah you know you get what you pay for i mean i you know i i i believe in saving the pennies and then getting a piece something good that will last now it doesn't mean that everything on alibaba doesn't last OK, but um, I just don't want to encourage the people that blatantly copy brands. Because, you know, a lot of you guys on here are talking about, you know, some of you guys work in IT and different things. You know, people invest in developing these brands. And for somebody to just copy without doing the work. Chances are they're cutting corners. They don't have all the inside info per se. So there are things you're missing out on. 
So if you can afford it, save the money and just buy the right stuff and be done. You know, and, 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 you know, buy the actual stuff. I don't want to drive a copy of a Ford. I want to drive a Ford. <laughs> now, it doesn't mean that. Uh, let me let me qualify. Why drive a copy of something when you can drive the real anything? So they need to brand their stuff. Then you can come and tell us, hey, this is by Fujikara or whoever. You know, because glasses, if they work, they work. Why you got to call it Forkly? <laughs> you know, call it something else. We need more. <laughs> Uh, Say so I want a Bastion, but the frame is like 15k. Yeah, and it's not, and it's not gonna make you avoid getting dropped by somebody who's fitter. You don't need to spend 15k on a bike. Now, depending on your means, 15k is relative. I like that you put the price there instead of saying it's expensive. That 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 says nothing. So, you know, for, for another guy, 15K might not be a big deal. And he wants to experience that 15K bike. That's okay. You know, but if you have something else, you'd much rather spend, even if you have all the money in the world, you will still choose what you're spending on. So it's just about choice. If you want to experience that, yeah, you can save up for that. You make the necessary sacrifices. And then you get yourself that experience. You only live once, you know. So it's just a matter of, okay, what is so unique about that bike that is 15K that would make me want to say, I want to experience that? That's the way you got to look at it. What am I getting for 15K that I should make that outlay? So they've got to have a good marketing program that will convince you that it's unique and special enough for me to want to experience that. And and there and there there are. I mean, there's a reason there's a market for Ferraris and Bugattis and all of that. They're not like Corollas and Lexus and all. That. So yeah, that's what I mean. You know, nothing wrong with a 15k bike if it's in your range and you know affordable. You know, and then you just say, you know what? I just want to see what it's like. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, don't buy a Chrysler 300 and put a Bentley emblem on it. Yeah, that's kind of like just cheesy. <laughs> it's a 300. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, you got it. That, that's what I'm talking about. There's no point to that. There, there are choices for everybody. We need all the varieties. Uh, you know, not act like, oh, well, this is a... Yeah, I've seen that. I've actually seen them do that. That, that didn't make any sense. That actually just makes people laugh. <laughs> I mean, he says, uh, what is it? he says marketing. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that 15K, yeah, maybe they sponsor a team or they spent a lot of money in the research and they're trying to recoup. Maybe it's a new brand or whatever. Who knows? All, there are a lot of expensive bikes out there. I mean, pricey bikes, per se. Uh, even the uh, Specialized, some of the Specialized, they're, they're up there in that price range. So um, I'm sure they've got their reasons. I've talked about it on here. My, my issue with them is if I'm spending 15 k that bad boy better fit me to a T. I shouldn't have to compromise Meaning that top tube need to be long enough for me. The the seat tube need to be 56. I shouldn't have to get a 58 because the 56 is too short in terms of length. Because you can get a bike built for you for much less than that from many builders. So if you're going to spend that, why not get one made for your style of riding and for you? You know, they'll make you a custom bike out of any material. So, yeah, custom bikes are not overpriced. I mean, I mean, there are some expensive ones out there compared to other stuff, but they're very competitive. You can get a, a very good deal on a custom bike from a builder built to fit you and your style of riding. 
So there's no reason that you have to settle. If you're spending 15K, it's got to be really special because, yeah, man, what's in that bike that I've got to experience? Yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, what's his name? Yes, Brooks said, hey, what's all the time? This is just talk cycling, uh, Brooks. Uh, what happened is we had a, a live session before this where I... I Instead of recording the analysis of the highlights of each stage of the tour, I do it live. And these some of these guys join. Some of these guys join. And so they started asking questions. Well, when I do the highlights, I don't like it to run on too much. If you ask a question that is consistent with the next frame I'm going to discuss, then I may address that. But there were so many questions, so when we ended that, just to make sure the video wrapped up in 10 or 15 minutes, that I just started this session so where we can just talk cycling. We have a lot of these from time to time where we just talk cycling, and then we also have Q&A. So yeah, anything goes here. We're just chatting about, about cycling. You know, whatever questions or suggestions or ideas you have, that's what we're talking about. So we're talking about Alibaba and all the different stuff out there, and that's how we got into. That's why somebody says, "Don't don't buy a three hundred and put a Bentley emblem on." <laughs> uh, so let's see here. Um, <laughs> 100% custom and printed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Austin Benesh. Yeah. 100, yeah. For that price, it better fit. Otherwise, what's the point? And, you know, you don't need that many very expensive bikes, whether it's 10 grand, whatever. You know, you can make it like, okay, I'm going to get one very nice bike just to, to experience that. You know, if you can afford it, why not? That's why you work. You work to spend money on yourself. So, yeah. That's not um, so. Let's see here, Alex Ray. The S work firm says only about eight k. I thought, yeah, I don't know. I guess I, I think it was more. I think it was like thirteen. We looked at we looked at one in a video I made. I think it was the one made for Peter Sagan. It's like thirteen or whatever. They're all up there. They're bicycles after all. I mean, come on. There's no engine on it. Think about it. Eight thousand dollars. You can buy a motorcycle. Have a lot of change left, and it has an engine. <laughs> and I said a motorcycle. I'm not talking about. The really unique one, but still, think about it. Four grand, you can have a motorcycle that's come with a motor. So bicycles are pricey. They can be. They have some that, you know, that are, in, like the Motor Bikini, they, makes, they make inexpensive frames and so forth. So, yeah, it depends on what you want to spend. But don't think that the very pricey bikes are going to make you a better rider. No. Spend more money on your fit. Spend more money on making sure that bike fits you. Get a fitter to help you because it doesn't matter what you pay for it. If you're not comfortable, you will not ride the bike enough to get your engine tuned. So keep that in mind. It's not the price of the frame that matters. I ride with guys that have lightweight wheels. Lightweight is made by our company in Germany. Their wheels are five to eight K depending on where you get them from. I ride with guys that have them on their bike. They get dropped. And I have $300 Zondas on my bike sometimes. I'm just using that as an example. So it's not the wheels that will make you fast. It's the work you put in to build your engine. So you need a good training plan. If you can't get a coach, whatever. Fitness, you know, your, your fit. And you need your kit. Your position and your kit. Because your, your CDA... With your, your coefficient of drag, you want to keep that low. That makes a big difference. And that comes from how you fit your bicycle. And then your comfort. If you fit your bicycle really well, you'll be more comfortable. You can relax. Your feet are not going to go numb. You can ride for hours. And the more you ride, the, the fitter you will get. So just keep that in mind and not focus so much on stuff. Focus more on you. Make sure you have time to ride if you're buying all this stuff and you got to work 80 hours a week take them back <laughs> oh man <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Brooks is right. If you got 15K to spend on a bike, you can get a custom bike for a lot less than that. You have change left. My titanium bicycle is a custom bike. It's orange. You guys have seen it. The frame was maybe 45, let's say. I got just the standard SL titanium tubing. They've got the lighter ones or whatever. I, I talked to the builder. He said, I don't know. It, you know, he said, I don't think it'll make that much of a difference. And so I just got the SL tubing or whatever. I just bought the frame and put my components on it. And so I ordered my own components and built it up myself. But the frame was under $5,000 and the bike fits me like a glove. So if I'm going to buy anything else, I'd get another custom frame. I love my frames that fit me. He made the seat tube 70 degrees, 70. And then made the top tube 59 centimeters, which is what I need. And the bike is 55 or something like that. I couldn't get those angles in a 55 from any manufacturer off the shelf. I'd have to buy a 60 to get a long top tube. And then it would probably be like a 72 and three quarter like my Colnago. Then I'll need that funky little setback seat post to put the saddle where it needs to be. So I, I prefer custom bikes because back in the day, they made more sizes with shallower angles than they're doing today. Everything has 73 and a half, 74 seat tubes. For a tall rider, I got to get a 60 tube. And even then, you'd be lucky if you can get a 73 seat tube. So I don't know who the builders are talking to that put the bikes on the shelf. But they're, you know, they used to make multiple angles back in the day for the same size. You could get a 56 with a 72 and a 56 with a 73 or something like that. Not anymore. They're making fewer sizes and they call them small, medium, large. That means nothing. So, yeah, that's my beef with them off the shelf. So if you're a tall rider with a long femur, you have fewer choices other than getting a large, unwieldy frame. So that's, that's the thing we deal with. So Melanie is asking, have you worn or tried past normal studio kit? I've seen them. I have not worn them or tried them. They just look. Meh. Now, I can't speak to the quality. I'm talking about the aesthetics. It's just, you know, kind of like, they're not bad looking. They just don't pop. And when I checked it out, people have asked, can you review this or whatever? Well, they didn't send anything to me to review. <laughs> you know, I can't review what I don't have. She, you say you like their style. Okay, let's go. Let's look at them. Let's switch here. Let's see. I don't know what I've got over here. Let's find it. Let's go. Uh, what do I have? Let's do this. Let me let me turn off the tour here. And let's go find Pod Normal. This is why I like this setup. So we can all see what I'm, what, what she's talking about displays i think i'm going to use chrome no let's use safari all right let me let me grab something to share here here we go give you a browser to share All right, let's find, um, let's see here. Thought I had that. Okay, that should be good. Paw Normal Studios. Yeah, somebody asked me to review them a while ago, and I, I went and looked at them, and I didn't see. Here we go here. All right. Uh, usual nonsense here. Let's go. Let's look at jerseys. All right. Oh, they've added some color there. Okay, Melanin, I take that back. You have to have an open mind, people. I like that yellow on the left. 
I like colors. I look good in bright colors. My skin is very brown. So if I wear a lot of dark stuff, it just darkens everything. So I really look good in lighter colors. And so I try to err on the side of that. I like that yellow jersey there. So yeah, when I when I looked at it, it was a while back. Somebody had asked me, "Can you review this?" A comment on the on the channel. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm looking at these comments here, and uh, Austin says, "If I buy a Colnago, does that make me punch a car? Right? No need for a diet." <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> oh man <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah our sport is too crazy Just get get what works for you And really guys All jokes aside Just like if you were buying a pair of shoes You would not just buy what was on sale You would buy a brand you liked And you would buy a shoe size That fit your feet or as far as a style, meaning that, you know how you, you try on some shoes and then it bows out because it's not set up for your foot. Like I have flat feet. The next guy might have more arch. So you got to get things that fit your body. So fit is critical. People ignore that. A lot of people don't get a fit. They fit themselves for years and deal with headache. I got a call the other day because I told you guys I do a lot of bike fit. The guy calls me on the phone to tell me, my feet get numb when I'm riding. So I said, what is the purpose of your call? He couldn't tell me. I knew why he called. He thought I would just give him a solution on the phone. That's like asking a doctor for a diagnosis without seeing you. So he hesitated and it threw him off. And then I finished it for him. I just told him, I said, if you go online and sign up for a fit, I'm sure I can get rid of the numbness in your foot. Numbness in your foot doesn't tell me anything. There are many things that cause that. Like taking your car to the shop. My car is hard to start. It's not one thing that can cause that. So they got to look at your plugs and your whatever else. Fuel injector, the whole tuning system. You know, you just call on the phone like, I'm going to give you an answer. I'm like, I can't help you. I don't know why. Your saddle might be too high. And maybe you, 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 you're killing the nerves that you sit on. That's why your feet are numb. I told him, I said, your balance is off, so we need to revisit your entire fit. That's the proper answer. Anybody telling you something else? They're just blowing smoke. I like that yellow jersey. I don't know if I like the price. $212? Man. I hope they have sales. Let's see. It's a beautiful jersey, though. Wow. It's beautiful. And it comes in different colors. Yeah, I see what you're talking about, Melanie. Now, this is more like what I saw. A while back, maybe I didn't look deep enough, but it just, they were like, just too drab. So if I look at these here for me, right now, the yellow is the only one that blows my mind. And so let's say we want to shop for a jersey. What I usually do is this thing XS small. That means nothing to me. So. Try our size guard it says, what's my size right there? I'm going to click on that. And then it asks you for your height, weight, and all of that. So for each manufacturer, once you go through this and you find out what works for you, then you got to kind of make a record of it. Because, for example, the jersey that Suki sent me is an XL. Well, I wear large with Rafa. I wear 2XL with Castelli. You know, they mean nothing. It's the dimensions that matter. So if the dimensions are, you know, from this to this means that, it's only for that manufacturer. So don't worry about, oh, I wear large over here and 3XL over there. That means nothing. You haven't changed. These guys keep messing around with their numbers. Like they're asking for height, weight, and all of that. Why don't you just give me chest size or something? What my height got to do with anything? We can be the same height and weigh the same and still have different dimensions of our body, you know, my chest or whatever. So this kind of stuff just complicates. Now I don't want your age. and What your age got to do with the size of the jersey? <laughs> ah, 
Ah, man, that's weird. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful jersey, though. It's lovely. That yellow is lovely. Let's see here. Let's make it bigger. There we go. Look at that. That's lovely. And they got the zipper covered. That's good. That, that way it doesn't chafe. It doesn't uh, rub your, your pants, your shorts, the lycra. And then they got vents under the arm. I like that. I wonder if they give you different views. They don't let you flip it around. They should, they should do it the way. Here we go. Got a little side there. Let's see. That's the back. Let's see how many pockets they got back there. It's three. The pockets look. Pockets are reinforced. That's good. Yeah, they're they're even pricier than Rafa. Everybody says Rafa's expensive. These guys are. <laughs> they're getting close to Asso's money. <laughs> that is nice, though. I see why they caught Melanin's eye. That's beautiful. Let's see here. Um, Mm, yeah, Alex says it's bananas. They're talking about our sport. Yeah, cycling's always been like that. Just a little crazy. From the time I started it, everything about it, when I used to wear, I used to use toe clips, the shoes that you had to buy to step in the toe clip for it to lock in down there. They were pricey too. It's always been like that. <laughs> Dwayne says, I've seen... Uh, Let's see here. Let me let me make this bigger so I can see his chat. The chat is gone from here. <laughs> Do we say he's seen people get dropped with pro ready bikes? Yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta do the work. You have to do the work. It's not the bike that's riding; it's you. I, you know, um, I mentioned once before, but not for this audience. We did a ride one time. I had my blue bike, and it's steel. <laughs> and we, we were playing, so I had launched some attacks. We probably had it on film that day. When we stopped at the store, I went inside to get something to drink. First thing I do when I get to the store is I go get ice, fill up my bottles, so I can get ready to go. I don't sit around chatting, because you got to be ready to go. And when I came back, Paul told me that one guy was tapping my frame. He was trying to make sure that it wasn't carbon. He was tapping on the top tube. And I just started laughing. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> Um, oh, Yeltz wants to know what site is it. This is uh, just type pod normal to P A S N O R pod normal studios. Um, I didn't see your comment earlier. I just went and typed us dot pod normal studios dot com. If you just search for it on Google, it shows up and you can just click on the link. Melanin had mentioned that she likes their stuff. I had looked at the stuff a long time ago. And it was kind of drab. The colors. The, the, the style is good, but the colors are kind of just dark, you know, funeral looking stuff. <laughs> I like bright colors. This is the first time I've seen this color on there. It's really nice, but I hope they have sales. So I'll, I'll keep a tab of, on it and uh, maybe we'll be able to. I'll contact them and see if they send a jersey to the channel. But I like the vents on the side here. What you see under the armpit and down the side. Let me make it bigger. That's very good for breathability. That jersey looks nice. The collar looks nice and comfortable. Yeah, so that's good. It's good quality stuff. So for $212, I can get, uh, let's see, from Suki, I can get three jerseys from Suki and they make some nice stuff so you just kind of have to you know weigh it I guess hopefully they have still the white jersey looks nice too over here this with orange I like orange that's a little orange band and white that would be nice in the summer see what that it looks like yeah it's summer you got all the vents under there this is the time of year yeah it's the same as the the yellow we're looking at. 
Yeah, this, this I like the way he put it together in this picture. See, they give you suggestions on how you can use the kit. I like when they do that. So you could do like a white shoe, white socks. That will pop. And if I were to do this outfit like he has, I wouldn't wear a white helmet. It would be too much white. I would go black with the helmet. And then really everything would stand out. So sometimes you can get too much. But that's nice. I like when they suggest combinations. So no, this is good, Melanie. I'll keep tabs on it. Maybe they'll have some sales. <laughs> Somebody asked that. This is funny. I got to read that. It's, it, it's on the screen, the, the comment. He said, $200 for a jersey. Does it come with lunch and dinner too? <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> That's Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne? Uh, I thought it was somebody else. <laughs> uh, I said, yeah, here we go. Austin says, ride a 14K bike and eat a $5 pizza. I'm glad you said that. Paul and I talk about this stuff all the time. I'm not going to name names, but this is for real. We have guys that are riding 10, 12K bikes. OK, but if you look at his shoes, it looks like it's time for a new pair. Like, come on, man. That's why we don't ride with them when it rains. Nobody wants to put mud guards on the bike because I guess it's not cool. I don't want mud in my face either. That's not cool either. Or on my back. That's why they don't like to ride when it rains. They dodge it. If you can spend 10, 12 grand, you can't buy a $35 pair of mud guards. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. I like that. Eat a $5 pizza. <laughs> I don't know. $5 pizza is pretty good. Domino's does $5.99. That's funny. <laughs> um, Brooks, do the, do the Suki, man. The Suki jersey. I did a review on it. You can search on the channel. Use our code, Velo Harmony. You get 20% off. So for about 65, 70 bucks, I think you can get that jersey is really nice. It's just not priced. I, I think they may have started making jerseys for other people and decided to start their own brand because the jerseys are just as nice as the stuff we're getting from Rafa and La Passion. That, that I've introduced to the channel. So La Passion is an option. Suki is an option. You don't have to pay no $212, $65, bucks With the discount, it's probably cheaper. So yeah, you, 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 there are options. Sukisports.com. Uh, you use the Velo Harmony, you get 20% off, I think. They gave us a code that we is down here on this scrolling thing there. So no, you don't need... No, 212. They better put that thing on sale. I ain't paying no 212 for no jersey. I got enough jerseys. I don't need any jerseys. They're just nice to have at this point. Dwayne says he likes the Wymo Star brand that has a race fit with sleeves that reach the elbows. I've never heard of that. Let's see here. Let's find it. Wymo Star. W. I hope you spelled it correctly. W E I M O S. There we go. Why well, most They make women's jersey too. And it's made, let's see, whymostar.com. Okay. Let's see what they look like. Everybody does this nowadays. This crap. This this box that just pops up as soon as you get there. It's annoying. <laughs> Why most star cycling collection? Shop now. Let's look at men's. Let's look at jerseys. All right. What is this? Yeah, let me turn off this Wi-Fi thing. All right. I got some crazy looking designs. You couldn't pay me to wear that one on the left. That's busy. Let's see here. Let's see if I see something that jumps out. I like my stuff to be a little more subtle than that, but uh, are all of them the same? They got some good USA looking jerseys there. Let's see here. Every time I click on this, it brings South Africa. 
as a price. Let me see. Yeah, that's a simple looking one here. Well, what I clicked on was simple. This is a little crazy. Let's see what else they got. They're on sale. I like my jerseys to be a lot less crazy. Like this one got so much going on. It's just kind of busy right there. So yeah, it's like $45 for a jersey. I don't know what material is made of. Let's see here. How breathable are they? Mm. $45.98. I'm not sure which one you mentioned with the long sleeves. I don't see any with long sleeves. I get to your elbow. This time of year, I mean, a lot of them come in the middle of your arm. I think that's okay. The arrow ones probably do, but they need more. They need more laid back uh, designs. These things are crazy. Let's see here. Look at this green one. This is not bad. Uh, okay, let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie says she only wears colors. I, I don't just like. I don't like just black cycling kit. Yeah, I have a black, and there sometimes I may wear black and black. But yeah, I like. I like colors. I think it's it keeps it interesting. But I like um, more solid looking jerseys. Like when I got on this site, quite a few of the jerseys. There's so much going on. It's just busy. You know. So you got kind of have to pick, I guess, what your preference is. Yeah. But like, for example, let me put up Suki Sports. I really like their stuff because they're making like almost Rafa quality jerseys and you're getting that La Passion costs. I'm like, man. Let's see here. Let's go to let's go to let's go to tops. Men's let's see men's first and then we'll look at women's. Cycling, they got base layers. I'm, I'm going to just look at the jersey. Just a regular. They got long sleeve. Uh, okay, I, I did a video with the yellow one. I wish this thing would go away. There we go. All right. This is the one that I did a group ride in. And her, the designer saw me wearing it. And he told her to have me try the XL. Because they had sent me the 2XL. And I was pleasantly surprised because my challenge with the jersey was I carry a lot of stuff. And when I would load the pocket, there was more movement than I liked. It was still okay, you know. And so now with the size that they sent, it's an XL. It fits tighter around the waist. But like all the other people, what I like, remember went to the other site. I think it was uh, Power Normal. They were asking for your age and your height and all of that, you don't need all of that to get. If I want to know what size S is, you should have a size guide based on dimensions. Because it doesn't matter what my age is. What matters is this. Now, one thing that's cool about these guys, they will make you a custom size. You just give them your dimensions. If you're not in their ranges, they'll make you a custom size. I was not aware of that. Somebody complained on the channel. Then the, the lady, the marketing lady, came and replied on our channel here, telling that, that a subscriber that we can make any size you want. And they have a button for custom size right there on the far right. I haven't seen anybody else do that. But this is what I was talking about. Right here, this is the chart. It's kind of small. Let me make it bigger if I can. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Okay. So you, you, you basically, I made a video about this where you can come in and just say, okay, my chest range is this to this. Right here, XL in their range is 37.5 to 
to 41.5. That's right below where my chest is. My chest is 42. So the XL fits me nicely. Like second skin, it pops. I mean, it's just perfect. The double XL still covers like 39 to 44, but then you're dealing with two inches of fabric. But you remember, these fabrics are stretchy. So whenever there's a question, stay with the one where you're on the top side, not the bottom of that range. For any manufacturer, then your jersey will fit you right. You want it to be tight on you so you arrow, and when you put stuff in the pocket, it doesn't swing around. That's for any manufacturer. And this is what you need. Nobody cares how old you are, how tall you are, or whatever. <laughs> you know? So normal can learn a lot from these guys. <laughs> Uh, let's go back. But this is just one of the jerseys. Let's see here. Um, let me go back to the normal size there. But I like this one. I like the color, of course. Let's see. And then the pockets are reinforced. I think I did a, I don't know if I did a review. I did not review this one. This was the second set that they sent. And another thing they do is they put their, I guess they're proud of their brand, but they, they put the, the branding on the neck and it has your size in that little square. I mean, it kind of looks neat. I don't really care that it says XL outside, but there's nothing on the inside. That, they sent me a purple one like this one. And all the jerseys are different prices depending on which one you look at. So that, this is another option. And, and if you use uh, Velo Harmony in the code, you will get more than that 10% discount they've got a, at the top there. So, yeah. Let's see here. Mm. Okay. Duane says that uh, Wyma Star is on Amazon, and that's where they have those sleeves. Okay. Justin Trudeau says, I wear full sleeve for UV and insect protection. I love their graphic designs. I, um, yeah, you can do that, but you can also get yourself some arm screens so you can wear with any other jersey you may have, Justin. I have arm screens. They're, um, they're white. They're, I got them from Rafa a long time ago. I think Dwayne has, Dwayne said he has black arm screens. Yeah, arm screens are cool. I wear them sometimes. We have our high UV days. I put them on. So, the pads, Josu, I guess it's Josu the pads. Have you worn Aerotech design stuff? No, I haven't. I'm not familiar with them. Let me look them up. Aerotech. Aerotech designs. There we go. And they got coupon code. That's always a good thing. There we go. Aerotech Designs. Let's go to their website. Got gel touring shorts. I don't, I don't like a whole lot of stuff in the shorts. Uh, gel touring. Let's see. Aerotech Design. Let's see. Let's look at their men, men's bike shorts, men's short cycling jerseys. Shorts are something, I, you, you notice I'm not looking at a lot of shorts. With shorts, you got to be real careful. Uh, try them when they're on sale and then see if you like it because you can't really send them back per se. And shorts are very personal for each rider. So when you find one that works for you, you kind of want to stick with them. Don't do a major outlay on shorts because you may not like the padding that much. So that's why I'm looking at jerseys first. That's nice. Let's see here. Aerotech men. Now, you see how this guy jersey fits him on, in the red here? Let me move this over. All right. So this is kind of a relaxed fit. Let me make it bigger. For me, even though this guy looks like he's been partying and, you know, barbecuing, whatever, I still think he has too much material. Look at the arm, okay? Now look at the side right here on his lower torso. That's a lot of folds. That's The wind's going to hit all of that. He could go down a size and still look decent. 
That, I just wanted to use that as an example. You don't have to be paper thin for your jersey to fit you well. He's just got too much extra stuff. It, it almost looked like he bought it and lost weight. That's kind of what it looks like. So when you're buying your jersey, let it fit you. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be, you don't have to have like a eight pack stomach to wear close fitting jersey. You're a cyclist. So you get it to fit you and you go, hey, you know, as you, if you lose weight later, you can take it in. But he's got too much extra stuff that wind will flap around on it. My biggest thing is I don't like anything moving because it can chafe. You know, just wanted to point that out. So, you know, that, that's more than even a, what I call a full cut or, you know, full fit. It's just a little extra. It's just sized a little. He picked the wrong size on that. I like that they have these bigger sizes. You see, they got double XL, 3XL, 4XL, because a lot of cyclists have trouble finding, you know, larger sizes. Because everything's made for these pencil thin 60K riders out there. <laughs> he bought it and lost weight. That's funny. No, that's what it looks like. You know, you don't have to look like punch a car to wear a well fitting jersey. He's just got too much extra fabric in there. And, you know, when we're moving on the bike, all of that flaps. That's drag. You know. So, anyway, but uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Relaxed arrow. <laughs> That's too big of a jersey. Yeah, it's just it's too big for him because you can see all the folds. He he could go down. Yeah, yeah. But you know, some people are very self conscious. You know, and he may not want it to hold him very well. But when you're on the bike, nobody sees that. You're 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 you know, you're you're bent over somewhat. Uh, you know, I don't worry about. It. I'm riding my bike. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back. Let's go back here. Let's go over here. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this Aerotech. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I ha I've never ridden gel shorts. I don't know what they'd be like. I don't even like gel saddles. You got to be careful with them. I don't know why you'd need gel in your pads. So, yeah, they look interesting. I mean, I don't know. I like I like real l light pads. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Dwayne said that's too big of a jersey. Yeah, they, they, they didn't size him right. Whoever took that photo shoot, they should have put a different size on him. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, the, the biggest thing is this. You you kind of have, it, it does not matter whether you're buying from Assos, Wimo Star, whatever. The sizing process is really the same. You want the thing to fit you to where it's not moving around too much when you're riding. You know, because the thing is, is uh, one thing Rafa, Rafa does is if you buy a jersey and you lose a lot of weight within a year, they say, oh, we'll discount the replacement and all that. It's nice that they do that. But I always tell people, if you're trying to lose weight, don't buy too many sets of kits. Maybe get a couple. Just, they wash and wear real easy. Wash them after your ride and hang them up. I don't let my cycling clothes sit because we perspire in them. So I don't let them sit. When I come home, I use the, uh, they have, we have a washer that has like a micro wash where it uses very little water. I wash them, hang them up. Hang them on a the hanger and they, they dry. We have an indoor hanger. I did a video about it. It's on the channel, how you take care of your cycling clothes. Keep the thing washed. There's no point in them sitting around, especially if you ride in the rain and people spray you with mud or whatever. As soon as you get home, at least soak it so nothing sets. You know, I just, I don't like them sitting around. So for the most part, get them to fit you. It doesn't matter what you pay for them. You can pay a lot of money. If it doesn't fit you right, it will look odd. And then when you put stuff in the pocket, it will move around on you. So it's not what you pay for it. It's really what, you know, fits you. Some of the stuff we're looking at, like the, the Wymo Star, it was just too busy for my liking. I kind of like more solid colors than all that stuff going on. They're a little too crazy looking. But it had a few designs there, you know. But you kind of, so it was just to show that you don't have to spend a lot. It's a matter of taste. 
I did like the paranormal stuff. I have to thank Melanie for getting me to look at it again. But I didn't like the price at all. <laughs> so I will look at the picture from time to time. That's about it. Unless they put it on some serious sale. You know, now, you know, they're not too crazy. <laughs> yeah, correct. He said, yeah, taste and fit. You are correct about that. They're not too crazy because... Let me go. Let me go to Rafa so you guys can see. They're, they're not that crazy. Uh, Pod normal is not too far off. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> uh, let's go over here. Everybody's doing this now. You come to the site, they want you to accept cookies and all that foolishness. All right, let's just go and look at. This is Rafa.cc. Let's see men jerseys. They do make women's clothing too. Uh, they got some new stuff here. RCC exclusive Imperial Works. I'm just going to go to the hot weather stuff. So I'm going to go to the flyweight jersey right here. Okay. Now, um, let's see here. I've got this copy. Let me make it bigger. You can see when we went to Suki Sports, the same kind of little hash design or whatever this color i really like it it's called a terracotta and mustard the, the arm is mustard mustard is like yellow they, they call it mustard because of mustard that you put on a hot dog or a sandwich or whatever but um look at the price 180 dollars for this so pie normal was what 212 so that's what 32 dollars more something like that yeah, $32 more. But you can see the middle size is already sold out right here. So you can do like inform me when it's back in, you know, so 180 now. I'm going to leave this up here in a tab and I'm going to go to ASOS. Some people call it ASOS. I call it ASOS. I don't know which is the proper pronunciation. Let's see here. Safari so user encrypted connection. And see, okay. I'm not sure what that message was about. Let's go to, I don't go there that often. Uh, Assos of Switzerland. We'll go to the official site. What is this? I hate these. I mean, they need to stop doing it. It's annoying. Come to the site with a purpose. I don't need all this crap. Okay, this is the E. E keep RS. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if they've got a menu. Here we go. Men's clothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, jerseys. There we go. All right. Even also has got crazy looking patterns. Look at that thing at the top. <laughs> it looked like a volcano. <laughs> like the movie Volcano. <laughs> All right, let's go down. Let's see what they've got here. I want okay. So now the jerseys are pretty reasonable. This is one thirty for the summer jersey. Let me go down and find. Oh, we got a new subscriber, Anze Hudej. Welcome, welcome to the channel. Let's see here. Um, let's look at oh, this sponsor Chubeka. Let's look at their jersey. So if you want a copy of the Chebecca jersey, it's only one sixty nine. So I thought they would be higher, but they're not. So you really just have to shop. And also, they have sales periodically too. So I think with the sales, it you know you can get them to be kind of reasonable. There's a women's design there. Let's go back. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Dwayne says check out Kafit Cycle Wear in a little bit. Let's see here. What do we have? Uh, let's look at the women's here. We've been looking at guys all the time. Is this women's? I see a guy over there. I want the women's. There we go. Okay. Go over. Nice. So with the black on the bottom, they do that on some of their jerseys. Blends well with your shorts. Um... Let me go. Let me make it smaller here. 
Okay, this one is 120. So, you know, 120, 160. Okay. But a lot of these guys have sales. So if you go to their site and you sign up, get a free account. You know, they want your email. You can use Gmail, whatever you have. They will keep you informed about their sales. The only thing I recommend is don't wait for them to let you know when there's a sale. Because by the time they let you know it, stuff's gone. Because a lot of people that check and don't wait. So let's see here. Um, so do, Melanin says, check out Cafeet Cycle Wear. They're nice and not as expensive. Let's see here. K A F I T. Huh. Never heard of them. Learning a lot of new stuff today. K F I T T. Cafeet Cycle. Let's see here. Oh, it's a USA thing. CafeetUSA.com. That's what the site is called. Yeah, this is a nice looking kit. Let's see. Let's go to Elite. They've got Elite Luxury Solid Collection. I'm not sure. Let's try Elite. Let's see what's in there. Hey, said it look fast. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Chewbacca, <laughs> uh, British Attica, huh? Attica, British brand Attica. Okay, cool. What is this? This is Elite Wear. Almost look like uh, rubberized suits. Italian luxury, Agatha Blue. They call this. Uh, that's the Elite I was looking at. Let's see, summer. Cycling collection. I guess I'm looking at something else. All right, let's go over here. Okay, so the range is 90 to 45, and they're having a sale, it looks like. Italia. Let's look at this Italia here. Um, select options. Yeah, that's nice. That looks like a, like a skin suit. Choose a style. So you can get a jersey. Yeah, you can do a skin suit. So if we do a skin suit for a woman. How do you know what that? I guess you have to add to cart to get the price. Let's do that. Let's see what the price is. Select some product options. Well, I want skin suit. Uh, I guess we'll pick a size. Let's say medium. Okay, 165. I didn't pick a size. That's why the price wasn't there. That's not bad for a skin suit. That's a good price. The other guys won twice as much. Somebody said here uh, they bought a couple of spotty jerseys. Let's see. Spotty wear. Yeah, I remember them. Yeah, very inexpensive. That was on, uh, I think it's on Amazon. It's Samuel. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Yeah, I still have the spotty wear. And one thing I found about them, they're great for hot weather as well because they're very breathable. Very, very breathable. Melanie says she likes skin, so she prefers them to two pieces. Uh, let's see. Do they have pockets on this skin suit? I don't mind skin suit, but they got to have pockets on there for me. So I ride too long. So this one doesn't look like it has pockets, Melanin. So I guess you have a bag on your bike to carry a kit. I mean, your like your essentials kit. Or I like my skin suits to have pockets on them. My challenge with skin suits a lot of times is I have trouble on the shorts fitting. They're too short. 
I like the leg to be long because my my top I wear large, let's say for Rafa, and then their shorts I wear XL. Well, a lot of times their skin suits are sized so small that you got to size up. So it's skin suits are kind of tough to fit. If you find one that works for you, that's great. But, but yeah, that, that looks nice. Yeah. That's cool. That's good. That's good. That's good. So Melanie says Atticus. Not Attica. Attica is a is a jail in New York. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Let's see. Atticus. Atticus, I guess cycling. Here we go. Atticus.cc. Let's see here. Let's see what they got. Oh, they got cargo pants. That's cool. You can carry stuff on the side there. That's nice. You can put your gel in there. And you can just get it out quickly. Those are neat. But like I said, with shorts, I like to try them when they're on sale. Or if somebody just sends it to the channel before I go with a new brand. Because the pad makes a big difference. As well as, you know, just the overall fit. But this is nice. Now, I like this better than the... What, what, what was the one that Dwayne mentioned earlier? That Wemo Star? Wemo Star had too many crazy colors. I like these solids and the blends better. But I think with Wemo Star, you just have to look harder to find these kind of solids. That's nice. Look at that. Let's see here. 80 pounds. It's in pounds of what? $140 or something? I guess I can change up here. Oh, it's Great Bird. I can change it to US dollar. There we go. Yeah, so 113. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. So you just have to shop, guys. Shop and, you know, like, uh, what's his name said earlier here? He said, taste. I think, if I remember correctly. And I like that they're reinforcing all these pockets. <laughs> uh Let's see here. The black bibs. Oh, yeah, I heard about the black bibs, Samuel. I've checked them out. I watched the video. Some guy reviewed them on YouTube. Um, it was okay. I guess, you know, $40 bibs or something like that. I've heard about them. <laughs> Melanie said we have the same thing as sophisticated, very European. Yeah, this is actually very, very nice. I'm going to go ahead and tab this one. Let's see here. Go back. Foundation key. Yeah, I like these kind of colors. They seem to cover it. They got cabs and thermal arm warmers and gloves and. Those are nice looking socks. Orange premium. And they call this orange. It looks more like yellow. <laughs> That's orange. Good looking socks. Let's go to the women's tops. I like this color here. Orange foundation. Yeah, all the pockets are reinforced. See how they cinch them there? So you can carry stuff and not, not, and not tear the fabric. Yeah, that looks good. I like the arm length too. That looks very good. Atticus, huh? Let's see here. We're going to go ahead and tab this one. Amazing. Amazing. There's so much stuff out there, man. That's the cool thing. Choices. <laughs> Anzi. Anzi. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Who judged? She said, I have just watched your amazing chain set video from 2018. Since I am from Slovenia, welcome. And I began to cycle more in the mountains. I'm going to change my super record to 5034. That's a compact. Yeah. 
Slovenia. You guys have a, your champion is in the Tour de France this year. <laughs> uh, let's see, Greg Williams. I have really good luck with the Derry V bib shorts with match side panel from AliExpress. Yeah, we talked about AliExpress earlier, Greg. You missed out and <laughs> all the stuff that they have out there. Anzi says he got a deal for barely used super record chain set. Wow, that's a good price. 180 euros. That's very good. Yeah, that's a very good deal. Super record is the top of the line stuff. For 180, yeah, I'd take that in a heartbeat. Yeah, you would pay a lot more new. Yeah, super record is good. Um, and it, it should work with everything else you have. If you you Campagnolo guy, your super record. Yeah. You need to use, make sure you use a um, Campagnolo chain. I don't know if you've got an 11 speed or whatever. They're making them to where you can use them for the whole series. I've tried my super record with Shimano chain. Eh, it's okay. But it's best with the Campagnolo. And the reason I did was I got, I have a pair of wheels that has a Shimano cassette 11 speed that works with the Campy 11 speed without me adjusting the rear derailleur. So I thought, hmm, maybe I should get the 11 speed Shimano chain. It might work better. Nah, that wasn't the case. It works fine with the Campy chain. And it's just a record chain. Now Campy makes an 11 series chain for all of them as a replacement. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely keeping the Atticus. Uh, I'll keep my eye on them. Hopefully they have some sales. I like to get stuff when they're on sale. But what I will do, I will contact these, the ones that we decided to keep and see if they will send them to the channel. What I do, I have a marketing package that I send to these companies. And then they check out a few videos on the channel. And usually they start, they'll send some stuff, you know, so... Hopefully, we'll be able to get some from these guys and bring different things, different jerseys to the channel. You know, But uh, I think we should wrap up. This has been longer than I thought. It's two hours. Let's go ahead and stop. We'll do more of these. Um, I will schedule them ahead of time so we can have just, let's just talk cycling. I think that's the way to go. Um, Dwayne, want to appreciate you for, and all of you guys, Melody, for joining us. Glad you are able to join. It was uh, Dwayne's comments that made me set up this session right after the regular Tour de France stuff. Yeah, Anze says he has the Campy Chorus chain. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, let's see. I don't know if I can pronounce. I keep saying Brooks, but the first part of your name, I guess, is Yet. Yet Brooks or Yet's Brooks. Melanie, you're welcome. Anze, you're welcome. <laughs> Dwayne says this was fun. Yeah, we need, I want to do more of these. And I think we, I would appreciate some suggestions on a day. I think Wednesday might be a good day because the middle of the week, you know, hump day for this kind of a session. And, you know, we've got a Q&A that we do on Fridays anyway. And this is similar. I, I don't want to be very specific. I think anything goes. I like the let's talk cycling. So you can ask a question or suggestions and people can just hang out, hang out. Yeah, Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications because YouTube will let you know when we set up the live session. The reason I'm doing the Tour de France reviews live is it's just a little more interesting. And so we ended it and then we started this. So Wednesday, as late as possible, is what somebody just said. So uh, let's see. We started this at 5. I think 5 is reasonable because by 6.37, my wife gets home. I kind of want to wrap up and hang out with her. You know, because we both go our separate ways in the morning. So it's good to kind of tell. Was 1700 Central Time is what we'll pencil in for our Wednesdays. Um, let's talk cycling. And what I'm going to do is try to make, just set up a schedule on the channel so that people know what to expect with these live streams. I don't want to wing it that much. And if it 
If it changes because life happens and we have to cancel a session, then I will let everybody know long in advance. But that way we have a standing time going forward for these sessions on Wednesday. So I will let Paul know, Paul Ilonga, that we're going to go ahead and schedule this. I will schedule it out way ahead of time since it's going to be Wednesday at 1700. So you guys can come with your questions or whatever and just relax and just be yourself. There's no rules here. We're just hanging out. You read my name like Anji Hude. Okay, I appreciate the phonetics there. Anji Hude. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Excellent. It's Thursday morning where I am, so I don't mind. Okay, good, Melanie. We're gonna do, we're gonna be doing it the same time. 1700 my time. It's Thursday for you. I will schedule it ahead of time and just have a standing every Wednesday. Let's talk cycling at 1700. And whatever's going on, we can just shoot the breeze. Like we're hanging out in a cafe. You know, that would be kind of cool. Bring your drinks, whatever. We just hang out. That's kind of cool. As it goes, we'll get some guests. Other people can join, you know. It'll be kind of cool online. But this way we can look at things together. You know, so you guys have a great evening or morning and wherever you are. It's been fabulous hanging out with you for the last couple of hours. Dwayne, we appreciate your support of the channel. All of you want to thank you for everything. And we're going to just move into this new little trend that we're trying to do on this channel here. You guys take care and be safe out there.